Greetings. Salutations. I'm Adria. And I'm Andrea. Welcome to The, the Chronic Hustle. Hey. How are you, my dear? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm lovely. I have no complaints. Okay. Welcome to episode, what is this? Six. Six. Okay. Sace. Sace. Um, what's up, Doc? Yes. What's up, Doc? Crunches carrot. Yes. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this one is going to be all about just um, a couple of experiences that we've had with doctors. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to it. If not, some of it can be funny. Some of it can be entertaining. Some of it can be very, like, eye-opening. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, yeah, funny, entertaining. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if any of mine are going to be funny, funny or, or entertaining, entertaining, but they can be. But, yeah, so we are funny. funny and entertaining as we tell the stories. Um, okay, so before we get into it, let's uh, do our icebreaker. Did you reach? Oh, it's my turn to reach with the claw. All right. And because I know that that's my question in there. Okay. <laughs> I know we need to fill it up. If you guys have um, suggestions for icebreakers. Yeah, email us. Yeah. Or DM us. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's a great idea. Um, so let's see. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I just read it. What is in your trunk right now? <laughs> Look, I'll go first. So my trunk is the one area that just never stays like clean for me. Um, and anytime I go to the car wash and I get that full wash, I'm like, do not open my trunk. Never look in my trunk. If anytime people are like, hey, I have my luggage, um, can I come? Put Don't it in open. the back seat. <laughs> back seat. Don't look in my trunk. You would think that I have something um, a, a criminal crim- in yes. there. Yes. <laughs> I do have a random, randomly, I have a paintball mask back there. And whenever somebody randomly sees it, they're like, why do you have a paintball mask? I'm like, because have you ever been paintballing? Those masks are disgusting. They, they are disgusting. So I have my own just in case I randomly go paintballing. I'm like, oh, I have a paintball mask. Okay. What else yeah. is back there? Um, oh, you really? She really want to know what's back there. Um, I always have recyclables back there um, because I'm always recycling. I will tote around recyclables until I make it to the recycling place. So yes, I recycle lots of things, um, and I always randomly have lots of things to gift wrap with. It's like an emergency. This is the Get best breath. question I could have ever asked. <laughs> Her facial expressions are hilarious. You Make sure you check out mask. our YouTube. <laughs> Make sure you check out our YouTube paper. channel so you can see her reaction. Oh, it's like a whole gift wrapping uh, station. Like I'll have tape, I have scissors, I have like tissue, uh, oh an array God. of colors. I have like gift wrap bags, and I have lots of those recyclable totes. Because I always plan on not using bags at the grocery store, and then I forget to bring the totes in, and then I leave with (laughs) grocery bags. Yeah, so those are some of the things that are in my trunk. I also have an array of baby shower decorations. All right, we're going to (laughs) wrap it up on Andrea's side of the trunk. Why would she ask that question? I was not prepared for that. That was a good question, clearly, though, because that's hilarious. So what's in your trunk? Um, Yoga mats and art and a ton of canvas that I've painted on. Wow. And that's it. And then a gas tank thing, a little gas thing. That's it, yoga mats and art. Cancel, cancel, cancel. You don't need that. What you mean? Why do you need a gas tank thing? Just in case I run out of gas. Cancel, cancel, cancel. And I gotta exactly. Go get some gas. <laughs> what? You were yeah, gonna cancel, run out of cancel, gas. Cancel, I know because I be riding on E. My dad said after that's e. the stupidest thing you could ever do is run out of gas. My dad said that. To I me agree with your dad. <laughs> Unless your that. gas gauge is broken. If your gas gauge is broken, and you then didn't it's know. very difficult. Yeah. But, it's like, but come if on, you're bro. watching your gas tank thing come on, bro. dwindle. <laughs> You know when you hit E, you got like 20, 30 Come miles on. left. Yeah, so. That's what's in my trunk. So, okay. um, <laughs> I like that one. So, yeah, if you guys have any good icebreakers. Yeah, what's in your trunk? Yeah. Comment below. <laughs> we're, we're, we don't know where to, like, oh, yeah, in our YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, comment below. <laughs> like, share, all of those things. Subscribe. Click the um, okay. Um, what's up, Doc? So, let's start off with... Some of the worst experiences, the worst experience 
that you can uh, um, imagine with your doctors or that you can uh, recall your doctors? I've had two really just like, what the f- moments mm-hmm. at the doctor and at two very different times. And they're short. Okay. Um, they're short. So Here, you can do one, I'll do one, then you do one. Okay, cool. Okay. So my very, like, one of my first experiences ever. So this is post-diagnosis. I'm still 12 years old. Mm. And there's a medication out um, at that time called Remicade, but it hadn't been out for, like, over 10 years yet. And it it's still, like, on the market. Like, when you would look at the side effects, like, lymphoma was high on the side effects. Not in rare cases. It was still occurring. And my mom at the time, she she did want me to have some relief. And she was open to it. But the rest of my family really was just like, I don't think that this is a good idea. Maybe take more of a traditional route. So Remicade is a a medication distributed um, intravenously. So through IV over a period of time. And even that, like having to go and sit in a sterile environment for six or six to eight hours to get medicine just at 12, I don't think any of my family was interested in that for me. And my mom was just desperate for a solution. I understood what, where she was coming from. So she agreed to it. And then the day that I was supposed to get it, she refused it on my behalf because um, I'm a child. And I remember being in the doctor's office and my mom very meekly being like, you know, I, the, our family just doesn't think it's a good idea, and we want to take the more traditional route for treatment. Mm-hmm. Y'all, that doctor got so upset. He was, he was pissed. He was pissed off at my mom. And I don't recall everything that was said, but I remember how I felt. Mm-hmm. I felt extremely uncomfortable. He was very demeaning to my mother. He was very like... Why would you even come here? Why you're not even you're not a good, you're not being a good mother to your child? He implied a lot of things, and then he proceeded to ask us to leave. He kicked us what? out of that doctor's office, and I remember feeling like, well, who the hell is he talking to? But not verbalizing it. Yeah. And a lot of people that know me today, they know I'm I'm very I'm I keep it a thousand, mm-hmm. and I always wish I was the woman I am today. I, 12 because oh, I yeah. would have Don't went we all. in <laughs> on him yeah. and that was just such like a uh, experience of like you oh, don't care about terrible. me you missed out on a check yeah. and, and you were upset about that yeah. um, so that was like oh. that was one of my early on experiences okay. worst experiences okay I can tell one of mine um, and I'm very sorry that that oh, it's all that, good. that that happened yeah Thank we, you. we we yeah definitely let's you know, hold space for that. Thank you. But we've also we've, we've this is so that, yeah, yeah this is so far in our journey yeah, to where absolutely. we are now. So, but it takes nothing away from how you feel in that sure, moment. That absolutely. sucks. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, one experience was when I was experiencing incredible hip pain. At this point, um, I wasn't able to get in and out of my car without um, f- uh, physically assisting my my legs into and out. I couldn't lift my leg basically, so I could walk, but I couldn't like step into a bathtub without like craning like right. yeah my leg into um, the bathtub. And same with the car. So I finally made an appointment with a doctor and. Um, It's all about vibes, and we did not click. He was much older, and um, which nothing against older people, but um, I anyway, um, (laughs) I'm not gonna describe him, but um, I'll tell you what happened. I went in and I was like, okay, I'm experiencing incredible hip pain, and so he recommended that I get an either an MRI or an X-ray, I forget which one. Um, but he was like, but let's let's see what else. So he had me stand up in his office, and so he's sitting in his chair, and he asked me to turn around. So I'm facing away from him. And I'm a tall woman. I'm in my 20s at this point, probably 23. And then he, he basically, he's like, okay, step close to me and so like I backed in like I'm like confused right now at this point and 
he so he starts kind of just like feeling my hips with his hands and i felt really uncomfortable and um so he proceeds to kind of like press through my hip flexors and he's also has like his chest against my like my butt and i'm not saying that he was like um what's that like assaulting at any point um but it just didn't feel right for the kind of pain that i was experiencing for him to be like poking around like that and he was just like he so he kind of just felt around he was quiet and then he was like you know i think you have iliopsoasitis and which is inflammation of your iliopsoas which it's like okay Um, It didn't really answer any questions for me. It's like, obviously, but what's causing that, sir? Right. And um, again, take a step back. Let's look at the bigger picture. Exactly. He just he just just was like, yeah, this is. And did he tell you like why he was doing what he was doing? He just no. He was very quiet. He did not even explain what he was about to do. I don't get it. I felt really uncomfortable and I didn't and literally no questions were answered. And then he signed me up for physical therapy and i went to physical therapy for that and it and it did not help (laughs) at all so that was one uh pretty bad experience that i had um yeah that sucked i'm so sorry that that happened yeah i'm past it yeah but you ew yeah um should i do another my other let's do worse worse get it out of the way so that we can talk about the best because i I want to end it with the best i have one um best experience but my second worst experience was post-surgery um and i was i mean i had a very traumatic surgery and my body was very fragile afterwards Mm -hmm. and um the surgery i had removed um part of my bowel and so they reconnected it, and I had to get scoped a year after. Um, Wait, removed a part of your what? My bowel. Like they moved your... 12 centimeters, removed 12 centimeters of my bowel. So we haven't talked about that. That'll yeah. be in part two. But okay. yeah, they removed during my surgery. Sorry, when I hear the word bowel, I think of actual poop. No, bowel, like your small intestine. Okay. Sorry, we, we it's learned okay. it hey, we, we And we it. also, we know and things. we can talk about poop. Yeah, and, and we will. <laughs> uh, Crohn's disease, you know, all my cronies, we already know what's up. Uh, yeah. So, um, a, meaning like my actual small intestine, 12 ah, centimeters, geez. and then reconnected it. So, where it was reconnected, I mean, when you have anything sewn back up or anything, it's swollen at first or yeah, inflamed. Yeah. Mine was like that for some time, especially because it was internal. Yeah. Um, and I got a scope. And the I, this is a brand new doctor for me. Oh. I waited months to get into U of M's um, GI program. Like, I waited months for them to, to um, give me a call and get me on their schedule. And this doctor was older. And he was coined as one of the best. I have never been awake for a scope in any of my years. So that it had been about eight years then when I was getting scoped. I had I've had Crohn's Were you at the main hospital? I was at the main hospital. I had been living with Crohn's disease for eight years. Never ever have I been left awake for a scope. Did they did they um did they like get you into like that like sedated kind of not even in a twilight. Yeah. They gave me propovol. They knocked me out typically. That that right. was the standard. That was the standard, especially when you have so severe. So you're awake like how we are right now. I was in, they put me in a twilight. But you have to understand, oh. it's not a regular scope. I had just had surgery. And it's also, not, oh, right. And also, don't you have an scope. option to, like, choose at least? I wasn't given an option. You should you have options. You should options. be able to, like, just talk about it. I can't say, wait to the advocacy. Right. Um, oh, God. But they Ooh, scoped yeah. me in a twilight. Yeah, he didn't get he didn't get anywhere. He didn't get even to the part that he needed to scope. He couldn't even get there. I remember just screaming on the on the table and just I couldn't even believe that he would even try. And what people have to understand is there's so many costs around certain procedures and things. And so I didn't even understand you know, even his disposition in doing that and his lack of understanding and his lack of, of, of my chart. Mm-hmm. I could tell that he didn't really understand the severity. 
And it left me feeling so... It led me to my best experience, though. Okay. It led me there okay. because I realized that this person wasn't progressive and that he also had stopped reading. He stopped yes. reading. I think certain doctors why, get to a why, certain you point. Know, uh, that's why I, I kind of said, you know, the guy is older. But I don't want to say that all older people don't read and but they I'm gonna progressive. Keep it a, I'm sorry, but I'm going to say <laughs> that most doctors who have been practicing for a long time, yeah, yeah. they stop reading the new research and they stop right. reading the charts thoroughly and they stop asking questions. Yeah. He barely talked to me. Had he spoken to me like a human, he would have known the things that I had just endured. And no way, never once have I been scoped awake. So why post-surgery would you scope me awake? Right. That makes no sense. Yeah, he was and if ignorant. you look through your history, it, would, it, will say that you, it will say that you were asleep when you were every scoped single time. every single time. And at, it should. Yeah. And it just was a... Ama- it was a eye-opening experience for me um in the advocacy mm. aspect i can't wait for that episode i know it's gonna be so because we we don't hold nobody up i don't care if you a doctor a lawyer look, i don't give a she 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 called it out she's a warrior and i'm a dragon period and we will i will advocate yes period so i look for that episode yeah. coming up we're gonna have to i'm gonna have to nope no let's let it all out period. um okay I have one more um, unfortunate experience um, with a doctor. And again, this is on my journey to um, diagnosis. So I was getting, I was going to all these doctors for these, this thing here, this thing there. And so this was um, when I was experiencing pain in my feet. And I thought that I had a broken foot. Right. I thought I was walking around on a broken foot. And everybody's like, no way that your foot is broken. But I was like, I'm going to a foot doctor. So... Um, my primary care, ph- care physician or yeah, I think I got referred to this doctor. And so I went to him and, um, you know, he looks at my feet and he's like, your feet are so flexible. I don't understand why your, your arches haven't collapsed by now. And I was like, okay, great. Thanks. And he was like, yeah, but I mean, you know what? Your feet are, your, your feet are pretty much shot. You have a bunion. Um, you, you just have to get surgery on your feet. There's nothing that you can do for, for your feet. And then also you need to get these custom orthotics and they're $400. Um, we can give you some shots in your feet. And, and I was like, okay, wow, that's a lot. He's like, oh yeah, $400. Yeah. They're, you know why they're so expensive? You probably voted for Obama, right? And. Oh my God. I literally. My jaw dropped. Andrea. I couldn't believe that he would say something like that to me. Um, <laughs> you probably have voted for Obama, right? That's why it's so what? expensive. Yeah. And so I, 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 and I, and at that point, I didn't know how to. Sure. And also, when you come, sometimes when you just get confronted with just so much blatant ignorance and you're already and in a like, vulnerable space and you also didn't come here to talk about that i didn't like dog my feet hurt right you're a doctor stay focused aren't we supposed to be like working on a solution why yeah. are you talking to me about politics and who you're assuming that i voted for assuming why? and that's a really bold because you're to make yeah to, towards why a are you woman. period interesting oh period. my god um obama i love you Period. Come back, <laughs> please. We're we're tired. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, I love you. Um, so yeah, I I was mortified by that entire experience. Um, I got nothing from him as far as like any answers. Again, um, so. <laughs> and these people get billed for my ins- like these people get paid. We're paying them. Yeah, he got paid. He got paid to make that rude statement to me tell me that and my feet deliver, are shot deliver solutions to you in such a um apathetic way yeah oh your feet are shot so you know what is amazing i'm glad we are talking about this because one thing that i'm i'm very i feel very strongly about is that doctors need i'm gonna say this blatantly and i'm not looking for anyone to agree with me but you're a community okay. serve you're in community service to me like a firefighter like a police Absolutely. officer you are here to serve your community 
And I feel like the culture within, you know, amongst doctors is very, it's like this programming that happens that takes all the humanity out of the experience. People are coming to you and they're not feeling well. Yeah. That's affecting their emotional, mental, and physical well-being. Yeah. And the approaches sometimes are so lax and so um, unthoughtful. Yeah. You know, my mom speaks to that a lot. She's a nurse anesthetist, and she says that she has to create some type of, like, um, what is that called? Uh, um, not, you know. What, um, boundary? Boundary. Sure. She has to create an emotional boundary because people come at such a vulnerable state, and you can be so affected by it. But I think that it, it, it without, without having a proper outlet, Absolutely. Whether it be therapy, journaling, um, meditation, something where you can connect back to your own humanity and to A your therapy. own, yeah, your own empathy, yeah. um, you, you will overall become very hardened. Especially when you're in the industry of helping others. Yes. You, you need that. And I think this is a perfect segue into our best oh. experiences. And I just realized, just thinking about the experience I'm going to share Literally, the experience I'm about to share intertwines both of my negative experiences. And I just realized it now. After that doctor scoped me without putting me asleep, mm -hmm. um, I immediately requested a new provider. And we'll get into that in the advocacy of how you can pick whoever you want to treat you. And I literally was like, I want a new provider. I want them now. And I want to be re-scoped. I, someone recommended um, the current doctor that I have now, young guy, um, in his 30s, and I remember meeting him, and he, he just, before my procedure, we had a whole conversation. I'm set up for the procedure, and him and I are just talking, you know, and it feels so human. It just feels like this is how it should be. We should be connecting before you put me to sleep and put something in me and, and go look around. Right. Like that's an invasive traumatic even when you're getting these short procedures, mm -hmm. they're traumatizing your body, period. Absolutely. And it's also triggering to have to keep going since you're twelve. Like you have to keep going back into that space. Yeah. And he greeted me with such like kindness and peace and he described everything that he planned to do. And he scoped me, and the scope went great. He came back. He broke everything down for me. And then we turned around, and we talked about my treatment together. So I scheduled an appointment with him in, his, in just a regular doctor's office, and we sat for at least an hour. Not him poking and prodding me on a, on a table, um, sitting face-to-face -face like you and I are doing now, talking about my options oh. and talking about Remicade. Mm. Remicade came back 10 years wow. later for me. So t now it's been out for 20 plus years. I want to know more about it. And he believes this is the drug that is going to help yeah. me the most. And at this time, I was, I was highly considering Western medicine because I was tired. I was yeah. exhausted. Absolutely. And I wanted quality of life for myself. But I also wanted to know, can I get off of it? Is it um, a drug that I'll be dependent on? Is my immune system going to be able to regulate after I'm off of it? Can I have kids if I'm on it? Um, what are the real side effects? What are the real um, cautionary things? Mm -hmm. We talked straight up, yeah. face to face wow. for an hour. Mm. And I don't even think he touched me once during that exam. Yeah. It was just human to human. He was not above me in that moment. It was just, I know my body and you know medicine. So how can we work together? Yes. It was a really beautiful wow. moment. Yeah. Oh. See? Yes. I love it. Yep. I love it. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'll, I'll share my, I'll, I'll do one because the, the other one is, it's also a very good experience, but that can go into EDS part two. Okay. But um, my, one of my best experiences with uh, my doctor was, um, he's a physical therapist and I found him after I had my diagnosis and I found him through the Ehlers Denlos website. He was the only doctor listed on there um, who has knowledge of people with hypermobility and EDS. And so as soon as I met him, like our first uh, consultation, we talked for about an hour already 
Um, and it was literally just a conversation. I came in and I said, I am diagnosed with EDS. And he believed me, first of all. That was mm. one thing. Because some doctors are um, kind of like flippant about sure. that. Even though it's very real, there's lots of research on it overall as a syndrome. But anyway, um, so yeah, he believed me. He listened to me. He validated um, my, my pain. And um, and then so he proceeded to um, kind of do like a once over of my my physical capabilities, and he realized that I was in so much a state of so much inflammation that he, we couldn't do any physical therapy that day. Mm. And so he was like, "I'm not even going to charge you for the today." Wow. He he's like, "Make sure you get your refund up front." He's like, come back in a month. We talked about ways of getting my inflammation down. He's like, we'll set you up in an another appointment. And so he, after me being there, talking to him for an hour and a half, he, um, he let me go home without paying him. Okay, let's just start with that. Yeah. And he, he could have easily taken my money that day. Sure. And I would have gave it to him. Absolutely. It's his time. Yeah. And he didn't charge me for that. And then so when I came back again, um, my inflammation had come down incredibly with the plan that we came up with. And then he also, um, you know what, I think, I forget which one. I'll, I'll have to like nail down that time better when I talk about EDS too. But he, um, there was a point where I felt a little bit, kind of loss, a loss of hope yeah. went because this was freshly diagnosed and in a lot of pain and kind of like not knowing what my next step was and also working in the wellness industry, being a yoga teacher, being a Pilates instructor. Um, and he was, he was very comforting to me. He was like, never compare your body to other yoga teachers. He's like, those people who are teaching at your studio, they have a different body than you. Yeah. And he's like, you're not in the wrong field. Mm -hmm. You're not in the wrong career. You're not doing anything wrong. Like by him being a doctor and telling me these things, I, it was, it, it was like he was lifting these weights off yeah. of my shoulders. And he was like, your body's going to look different, and that's okay. Yeah. And it's going to move differently from other people, and that's okay. And, um, and we're going to work on having you move and be completely pain-free. Yeah. And when he said that, he, I, I believed him. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was one of my best experiences, and I continue to go to him, and he's phenomenal. Yeah, and, so. and that, to me, is the true job is using your knowledge, using what you know to assist somebody in achieving quality of life. And Oh my God, one more thing about yeah. him. Like by by him being speaking so like knowledgeably about it, yeah. um me and my mom went home like he has to have hypermobility or you know some type of condition. And so when I came back to him, I was like, "Do you have EDS?" and he was like, "No, I don't." And He's like, why would you think that? And he kind of laughed. And I was like, because you spoke so knowledgeably about it and so like empathetically about it. And he was like, well, I mean, I don't have to have a heart attack to be a cardiologist. Right. And, and <laughs> that is, that's He's like, the, this is my job to know yeah, about this. Yeah, that's when the empathy comes yes. in and the ability to put yourself into someone else's shoes. Absolutely. And he did that. And incredibly. to position yourself, that patient doctor advocacy. And that... It's so mm. important because we rely on doctors. We do. There is no one right way to approach your treatment, but you will interact with a doctor at least once to get your at least to get your diagnosis. Absolutely. Like, and I just really feel strongly that we need to strengthen those relationships. Yeah. Um, but that we also need to understand um, that we deserve to be treated in a humane way. Absolutely. You know, and and the doctor really has a lot of power in that. Yeah. And so um, 
Yeah, I'm really glad that you had that experience. I remember you telling me about that, and it was really profound. He made me and my mom cry. Yeah, it's like, important. Cry. Yes. <laughs> I was like, whoa, hold on. Wait, just stop for a second. I did not <laughs> come here to cry. Yeah. He he definitely, like, and that's he, beautiful. he touched our hearts. He was so very, good. very kind. So That's so good. Um, yeah. So if you guys have any... Worst experiences, best experiences, you can comment below or you can always email them to us at the chronic hustle at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. We'll share a couple of them, um, yeah. whether it be our stories right. or, um, you know, just posting. Yeah. And I think we're going to wrap it up. From yeah, here. I, th- I do think that it's important to say that you can you can have these best experiences. And yeah. that that came from us having at advocating for yes. it so we will we will get into that but i i searched for that doctor you yeah. you you put my foot down insisted yeah. upon finding that doctor and that's really important and yes. we're gonna have a whole episode on that right. we're we're so, actually gonna offer yeah. tools and like yeah things that you can so actually if be you've doing. had yeah. bad experiences we've been there there's yeah. there's more we had to narrow it down for this but and sometimes you have to have a bad experience in order to know what the good ones even look Absolutely. like. Absolutely, yeah. Because it can get really um, wishy washy. Absolutely. So um, we're excited. I'm excited for episode seven. Mm-hmm. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, you know yeah. where you can email us. Follow us at the Chronic Hustle. Mm-hmm. Um, Adria Moses. Andrea, Andrea Mahal. Yes. Yeah. And we're gonna sign off from here. Thanks for listening Bye. and watching. <laughs>